everybody! Welcome to the Saturday video. This is an extra special video because it is a collaboration with Risa Does Makeup here on YouTube. Thank you so much, Risa, for collabing with me on this and coming up with the fabulous idea. Makeup I've changed my mind about, or beauty products in general. I do have a few skincare things in here as well, and I love this idea. I think I've done something like this in the past, but it might have been a couple years back. But I think it's really important to recognize that our feelings can change. Sometimes I think we might think as YouTubers, you know, we put a video out on it, we've said this about the product, that info is final, and it's not going to change. It's really kind of a silly mindset to have when you think about it, because sometimes things do change. You can see this video is kind of an update. I've got some things that my mind changed for, for the better. I think most of the things are in that category, about six products are that way. And then I got a few things that I'm feeling not so good about with continued use. And some of these things I have talked about before on my channel, some of them maybe have not even gotten mentioned yet. And in this video, I'll sort of be sharing, this was my first impression on the product, but then with use, I turned out to feel this way. So videos like this, I think you really get the full scoop. So definitely check out Reese's channel and her video. I'll link to all that below. If you've not yet found her here on YouTube, she has a fantastic channel. I love her style, her look. She's gorgeous. And I feel like she gravitates toward a pretty glam look, and I love that. Over the course of her channel, she's done some super useful videos on hooded eyes, best foundations for mature skin. I can't remember the video that I first saw where I discovered her, but I think it might have been her hooded eyes video. I just saw it like in the sidebar of YouTube. More recently, I really loved how she compared um, the three latest Anastasia palettes, and she really broke down the differences between the Soft Glam, the Norvina, and the Sultry palettes, and who the different ones might be best for, and ultimately, I love her honesty. I love her kind of no BS, no nonsense style about delivering information, and on a personal level, she has um, been there for me. Whether or not she realizes it, she has told me the thing I needed to hear in the moment I needed to hear it. And Risa, I want you to know I appreciate it. Your kindness has most certainly not gotten past me. I think you're amazing, and I do feel very honored to get to call her a friend. So thank you, Risa. I'm excited to see what kinds of things she has to talk about in her video, but I'm gonna jump in, and I think I'm gonna focus on the things that I um, changed my mind for for the better. <laughs> we'll start with that chunk. First thing is this Drunk Elephant Lala Retro Whipped Cream Facial Moisturizer. And I have this, um, this was something I think I chose maybe as a Sephora perk and guys this doesn't happen a lot, but I've used it clean. There is nothing left in this container. It is all used up. I have been using this every night before bed, and I think I recall giving it a quick mention at some point in the video, and I thought, yeah, you know, I'm not really sure what it's doing, but I'm just, I'm using it because I have it. And there are sometimes nights where I remove my makeup. I remove my makeup every night, but there are some nights where I maybe forget to go ahead and moisturize afterwards. And let me tell you, I notice a difference. Or if I pick up something other than this, I do actually notice a difference in the morning. Like this is a thick, rich moisturizer, and where I notice it the most is across the fine lines in the forehead and dryness that develops for me kind of right in between the brow area. And this little sample here, this is 0.17 fluid ounces. It's not huge, but I mean, it's lasted me a really long time. I've been using this consistently for months, and I'm definitely going to move on to a full size. But the way my mind changed was like me just thinking this is so, so just as good as any other kind of rich moisturizer that you could use to actually feeling like it was making a profound difference in the hydration of my skin, kind of plumping it up, and noticing a difference by morning time before I sit down to do my makeup. And I think that's huge. And I know there's a lot of hype behind the Drunk Elephant line, but I do think this moisturizer is really good. And I'm just so proud of myself because there are very few things that I just, I wiped it clean, you know? There's another kind of primer related thing that I have definitely decided I'm a fan of. And it's from Farsali and it's called Skin Tune Blue. And a lot of the things it seems like they put out this way are maybe a serum or a facial oil, but this is definitely a primer. It says Perfecting Primer Serum. And this was one of those things where my gut instinct after putting it on the first time was, you know, really? For whatever reason, I'm an immediate primer skeptic and I don't think I'm gonna love it. But yet I keep reaching for this stuff. I keep wanting to have it on as that layer underneath my foundation. And the texture is really good. And I think what I love is the thinness. See how that's kind of starting to run down the hand right now? But then and you rub it in and you're like, oh wait, that's giving me like this layer of silkiness. It smells 
like a little bit cucumbery to me, but the softness that you feel on your face after you've got this on is tremendous. And I think you need to be aware this is not something that provides any like real additional moisture. Make sure you're putting your usual moisturizers, creams, whatever you like to use under your makeup on because this I do not see as a moisturizer supplement. I see it as a skin smoother and really capable of evening out the texture, but being very, very thin. And so I've really come to enjoy this. I see more of an effect with my foundation on top than I do from the Tatcha thing and the little disc. Just smoother skin, less in the way of pores. So yeah, I'd say I spent a good solid week second guessing this and then I started realizing, oh, I think this is why my foundation's looking really good and this is why my skin is feeling so smooth. So there you go. Here's something I've reviewed. Um, I really did criticize this for the fact that these Too Faced um, Tutti Fruity blushes have like a split pan going on inside and there is definitely glitter in the highlight side. And I critique them for that reason. And I saw it as kind of a downside, and I still do, really. I don't love that they did that. The glowy sides of these products would be plenty beautiful without the glitter flex, but I find these blush colors to be so fall friendly. This is the apricot one right here, and this is the cherry bomb one. And I love both the blushes so much, and I may just very sparingly dip into the glowy side if I want a little more glow, but the glitter in these isn't crazy wild on my skin, so I'm not highly annoyed by it. And like I said, if I really try to watch myself, I won't put a lot on, but I really truly do love the blush colors in there and it's been drawing me back to these products and making me want to use them and the warmth and richness of the color works so well with so many different fall looks. I'm not wearing these today because I got another thing I need to tell you about and I'm not a complete anti-glitter person. If you can put it on your eyes and make it cling there, I think that's gorgeous. I just don't really like the sporadic look of glitter just seemingly unintentionally sitting on top of the skin. I don't love it, but I do love the colors of these blushes which is why I'm still using them. All right gang, let's talk about the Tarte Clay Play. Not the one, but the two. Okay, I did a video where I decluttered some palettes from my collection, one of them being the original Clay Play palette, and probably in a week's time, I received this in the mail, the version two. And let me tell you, I really like the version two. So in this video, I'm not really changing my mind about the one I decluttered, but I just wanted to kind of let you know that they've got a second version that I prefer a whole lot more than the first. The first one I just thought was brown, brown, and more brown, and it came with like three different tones of contour, which I really didn't feel like I needed. And this one, I love what they've done here. They've kind of just put in some differing tones. You've got some kind of warm browns and deep browns. This middle section has a deep rich plum and some cool tones. And then this brownish shade over here almost makes me think of brown mixed with dusty rose. But what I really love as well is that there's a contour blush and highlighter in here. And you know I love a good multitasking palette because, well, I created one with Makeup Revolution. But this would definitely be something for my all matte friends out there who really like a fully matte eye look. I'm wearing all of this on my face today, so I put the bronzer on, you know, the perimeter of my face, a little bit in the hollows of the cheeks for some soft contour there. The blush shade is gorgeous. It's got a little bit of a glow. Such a beautiful, very classic peachy pink. The highlight here, I think, really stands out, but I definitely do need to buff it into the skin, and when I do, I'm so happy with the end result. Buff it into the skin, and you get rid of any riffraff, any flakiness. I love my Moda Highlight and Glow brush for that. I found that brush at Walmart, but again, all the eyeshadows here are matte, so it's a kind of a nice matte basic wardrobe that does plug in some plum, which I really like. I use this kind of peachy shade at the end at the start of my look. I'm getting stuff on my fingertips. But that color Instinct is really pretty there. I like Journey, that sort of dusty rose brown. I like that in the outer corner. Solstice, I think, is kind of a satiny finish shade, and I've got a lot of that on the inner part of my eyelid. I've got some of that deep dark plum on my lid, which is not a real purpley purpley shade, but it's enough plum to make me happy, and I love the way that fuses in with some of the peaches and warm browns here. So maybe this is kind of cheating here because I really didn't change my mind on the original product, the original clay play, but I think it's worth mentioning that they put out a round two and I feel much differently about this. I think this is way more versatile, not just in the eyeshadow color scheme, but I love that they went for three separate face products. I got a brow product that I've kind of changed my tune on here. It's from Physicians Formula and it's called Brow Last. Um, you may have seen Tyler apply this in my unboxing. I also put this on in a video and I'm immediately a little turned off by the fact that it's so creamy. There's so much like goop on the brush when you take it off. But when I take the time to kind of clean that off, I've really come to appreciate this stuff because I think it's all about control. If you do take the time to get that brush cleaned off and I find alternate a lot between the brush and the bare spoolie, the application is actually really good with this stuff and the staying power is amazing. The fact that this holds my brows in place with no additional product is sort of what drew me back to it and said, maybe you should keep playing with that. Find a way to make it work because 
because it really is a good tone, this um, dark brown on me. It's not too dark. I would just say pace yourself. Get the brush nicely cleaned off and really use that spoolie to your advantage because that rakes it through your brows and really gets a more natural look going. So I guess my tip here is have a little patience about yourself and see this product through because it really does do a good job. Here's a mascara that I've kind of decided I enjoy quite a bit. It's from Thrive and it's the Liquid Lash Extensions and I've done a whole video on a lot of Thrive stuff and this was probably one of the most hyped up things in the line as far as what I'd heard about it and I kind of was expecting it to be God's gift to mascara, you know, just expecting that really incredible length and I thought it was just okay. But as is sometimes the case with mascaras, they can get a little better with time. If there's anything I'm going to change my mind about with continued use, it may be a mascara and I do feel like for whatever reason this builds up a little bit better now than it did when it was brand new. I feel like it builds the length up a little faster and this is, I've always thought this is a really good mascara in terms of wear. It's not going to be one that smudges off or really flakes off because you'll notice when it's time to take it off at the end of the day, it's more of one of those things that comes off like little tubes, you know, off of the lashes. It doesn't dissolve and smear, it just kind of pulls off of the lashes in a strange way. And so at this point in time, I feel like I like it better than I did when I first tried it. Although, is it way, way better than other mascaras that I love? Is it better than It Cosmetics Superhero? Do I like it better than Lash Paradise even? Still, I would say no, I don't think it's to that point. But in my eyes, it has improved from, say, the first week of use. So my loves, those are the things that I have made a sort of positive change on, but I do have some things that I don't like so well. I've got four different products here. One of them is this product from Fresh. It's the Sugar Lip Wonder Drops, and let me tell you, I have given this stuff a really solid shot, and at first I think I just assumed it was doing something. Like, I just thought, oh, I'm taking this extra step to put a freaking serum on my lips at the start of my makeup routine. It's probably doing something, right? And I kept using it and using it. When I first started using it, I was definitely in the throes of a cold, and my lips were in really bad shape, so I kind of gave it the benefit of the doubt that maybe my lips aren't even in good enough condition right now to receive this product well, like there's too much dead skin flakiness. But then I kept on using it when my lips were pretty much perfectly fine and I would have hoped that this would have just made them even better, even more hydrated. But ultimately, I don't see this doing much of anything. It's a thin, like, it really just feels like a serum you would put on your face except you're putting it on your lips and it just says massage it in over clean lips and it's called a retexturizing and smoothing gel. But, I mean, I don't feel like I notice any real benefit from it. Get you a Laneige sleeping mask, get you a Nivea lip balm for crying out loud. I mean, if you want to profound difference in your lips, use something balmy. I just, I'm not convinced by these wonder drops. Another skincare kind of related thing that I feel like I used and I kept using and enjoying for sort of the wrong reasons <laughs> is this Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Pink Juice Moisturizer. I've used it about down to there now. What drew me to this? The pretty packaging. What kept me using it? The fact that it smells like watermelon. But does that really matter when it comes to skincare? Ultimately, I think this is just a thin, lightweight moisturizer. I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't want to get carried away here because an oily skin person who just really wants a light level of moisture, maybe they'd really like this. And maybe that person is really obsessed with watermelons, so this will totally speak to them. I'm not trying to totally knock the product for everyone, but I feel like I end up with a lot better look on my skin with a richer moisturizer underneath. I've been using some different oils and serums and stuff from the Makeup Revolution line. I'll sometimes layer up my Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base, which is very thick, and it's a far cry from this product. It's really ridiculous when I ask myself, like, if watermelon wasn't even in the name, if it didn't look like this, would I have even been drawn to buy it? The answer is probably no. So that's silly of me, but I don't really love it. I've got the cutest little thing here um, from Kaja. I got this off of Sephora's website. I love the packaging, and I know Risa is a fan of this, and for some reasons I'm a fan of it too. I mean, this is adorably put together here. It's a trio of eyeshadows, and everything is like shimmery, sparkly, very fine shimmer, and I was immediately attracted to it when I got it home and I swatched it. I was like, gorgeousness, you know, I loved the way it looked, and for the first couple days I put these on the lid, particularly this shade right here. See how it's almost golden peach? Putting that on my eyelids, the one swipe intensity, like, I love that. But here's the issue for me. The staying power. This has such fine glitter and I don't even notice when it's happening particularly, like when it's drifting down off of my eye area onto my cheeks, but when I'm out in normal lighting, in public, doing that old rearview mirror check and I see all of this little fine sparkle, I'm like, 
I didn't put that there. How did that drift down? And I have put it on top of primers, but maybe this is gonna take even more TLC. Maybe there's a way that this can go back to being something I love. Because initially I was just overcome with the gorgeous finish of these products. And this is the color, the set called Orange Blossom, by the way. So you've got sort of a champagne-y light peach. This one that I said is kind of a golden peach. And then your bottom shade is a little bit taupey. And I just feel like I've been a little bit thrown off by that immediate intensity on the eyes, but yet maybe I'm layering on too much because it's drifting around. And as I wear it throughout the day, it's not looking great just kind of unintentionally all over my cheeks. Here's another palette that I feel I have a very mixed opinion on. Ultimately, it's a product that I don't think is worth it for the fact that I have a problem with a good chunk of the shades. It's the Volcano Goddess from Becca, but there are some shadows that I think are so good. The textures of these mattes, let's just talk about this real quick. You got cloud, volcanic sand, and granite right here. Soft as can be, as rich and pigmented as you could possibly want. And then there are more shades in here. The first couple of looks I did, I focused in on haze and red rock. Beautiful shimmers, soft shimmers, just that hint of rosiness. I mean, I just thought they were phenomenal. That's red rock right there, probably my favorite shade in the whole thing. And I also like the coolness of agate ash and crater down here. Even hematite is a really pretty shade. But the statement colors in here, I don't know really what's going on, but gilded lava, midnight sapphire, and diamond dust. Midnight sapphire maybe shouldn't be lumped entirely in with those others because it's a different texture. It's just not like nearly as intense as you would hope it would be. But this one, this one, and this one, the chunky texture of this. I mean, you can build it up on the eyes. You can layer and layer and pull it across your lid, but it ends up looking really thick, not really attractive. I feel like diamond dust is especially hard to work with. It's, they're just like a chunky flakiness that really has to be smoothed onto the eyes. And even when you do and stuff starts layering up and getting applied, there's just a really odd look of thickness of product across the eyes. And for me, that makes it kind of a deal breaker with this palette. Even though they did such beautiful, like kind of metallic shimmers down here with these and these, and the mattes could not feel better. So I absolutely love that chunk of the palette. But once I started working into more of their statement colors, I just didn't really like any of them. And it's unfortunate because I think the color scheme is really sort of fall appropriate, beautiful for fall. The outer packaging of the palette is just stunning. Um, I like the lip glosses in this line. Didn't really go for the highlight, but the palette was just something where I thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna love this. Used a good chunk of it and then hadn't branched out into some of those other shades. And when I did, I thought, oh no, I can't do this. So those are my products that I've changed my mind about. I'd love to hear in the comments section if you've changed your mind about any beauty products. And if so, why? Like what made you do it? Was it hearing from someone who had a new technique that you could try? Was it just continued use and you figured it out on your own? But I think it's unrealistic to think we never will change our minds about things. So if you haven't already, check out Reese's video and her channel. She is an amazing part of this beauty community we have here on YouTube. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon. Bye.